Hello, welcome back. If you are following my videos in a sequence, then you must be realizing that we are discussing here about how to do a performance test, the test methodology, the best practices. And so far, until now, we have covered almost all these items except the very last item which is reporting. Okay. So, in this video, our goal is to, to, to understand how to write a performance report. Okay, so I will tell you the best practices. I will tell you the different things that we, that we must consider to write a report. Finally, in the in the, in the document session, you can find a sample performance report for your use. So here are the essential parts of performance report. The first one that you write is a very, very nice executive summary. We like to know about how you run the test, so that will capture in workload description. Then we like to know about your system under test, like how, what are the kind of hardware, what kind of software that you use while running your test. Then we like to know about the test result, right? What are what are your findings? And also another section on analysis of those results. So in the sense that here we report the test what you found, and here you will do some deep analysis, what kind of things how what and then also you can give your you know your suggestion or your you know, what you think about you know, why you are seeing this kind of test results and then finally we give a conclusion and in conclusion always some kind of open-ended questions that needs to be addressed in the later uh, performance testing right so basically so these are the in a very high level these are the these are the five sections I like to see on a performance report all right. So the first one, as I told you, is ex executive summary. In the executive summary, we summarize key issues that was uncovered during the test. And that is the goal of the performance test, that you will uncover some issues that was not found in the functional testing. Okay. And let's say, for example, a, a, a good summarization would be like always give some quantitative numbers. Like you don't say that the system runs slow that's a very vague statement rather say that you know while testing this thing we found that system is 10 percentage slower than the than the than the system that we used to have before or give the number like you know the the average response time of the important transactions are less than five second okay so people like to see some numbers here okay or you can also say that the cpu utilization is 20 percentage or you can say that by applying the third patch we saw improvement of performance by say 25 percentage okay so these are the kinds of numeric things people like in the executive summary and you have to summarize the key findings of your thing and also remember that most of the time this performance test ends without some kind of conclusion so it means there are a lot of unknowns to be addressed for a future test so you can just give them a you know, 360 degree view of the plan that how you are intending to address those unknowns so the next is workload description this sex this section is going to give us how do we run the test what are the scenarios that we have tested and what kind of transaction mix say for example you are running a online or you are, you are testing an online retail store then what are the search percentage purchase percentage so those things are very important to, to put and and as, as we saw in our workload description uh, chapter that uh, we have uh, created a table where we are given what are the exactly what are the activities that we are doing and what is the percentage mix of that act activities so that is called transaction mix and so on okay so essentially like you know you in this session you you mention uh, in detail about what functionality of application that you are testing and what kind of percentage and so on right and then uh, then the next one is system under test if you recall that uh, we in the chapter 2 we describe about system under test so which was a like a, a apache web server connecting to a oracle database and running an application called moodle okay so here like you, know, you give what is the moodle version so what is the apache web server version what is the database server version what kind of network connection between them how many cpus are here how many cpus are here 
and what is the RAM in this in this machine? What is the uh, you know what is the RAM in this machine and so on? So essentially, you give all those details about hardware and software details, and also you give them deployment configuration. Like in our case, we just run only one Apache one one database server, but it may happen that you might have multiple Apache server and then the load balancer up front that is connecting that is that is connecting to the Apache server and the clients are connecting to the load balancer. Okay. So what about the deployment configuration you should give and also you should be very much you should put in a neat diagram explaining the uh, deployment. Then you give the configuration changes like you know what kind of uh, tunings you have done. Like you know like say for example in a database you have changed the shared pool size or you change you know whatever parameter that you change you should note those things down. Maybe you can put in a glossary that uh, you know these are the things that we have changed okay so that is optimization and tuning requirements all right so so basically if you see we discuss executive summary we discuss workload spec we discuss system under test and the next thing is about test result okay so the test result as you see you know these are the like let's say you run a hundred user test so you will you will find different kinds of result uh, one of the result will be let's say response time the other one will be how the how the virtual users are running so v user starts the next one would be system starts so generally like you know in the report in the test result we put all the statistics so in the response time you can put different kinds of uh, statistics like say for example like how the transaction response time versus elapsed time like if you remember so this is the elapsed time and this is a response time so like how if, if, if the curve is like this or the curve is like this or whatever okay so that's a transaction versus elapsed time then you give the throughput that means transaction per second versus elapsed time then if there's an error that is coming out that versus elapsed time and what the transaction distribution you know in the workload specification you give this a, this is what I intend to to do and here you show that okay you know this is what happened actually that means in the workload specification if you say that activity A is going to happen 50 percentage activity B will happen for 20 percentage then whenever you show the result then the transaction distribution should match whatever you intended to show like you know 50 percentage actual transaction been done uh, and 20 percentage actual transaction of B has been done okay so that is what the system response time will show will tell you and then virtual user start so you will say that you know now how the users are running versus elapsed time let's say this is elapsed time and this is the v user and generally like you know we we we, we look for a graph like this okay so that means the virtual user start at time t is equal to zero and it's ramps up and and this is the ramp up time and after that it runs all those users started to run they're running according to the workload specification generating transactions and then at this time they're all done and started to log up from the system and this period is called ramp down okay so like you know in a, in, a, in a report i like to see if these kind of things are happening and also you tell clearly that your performance measurement is happening on this window which is called a steady state window Right. and also like you know, I would like to show that error rate if if for whatever reason if the virtual users are not not going through if, if they are they're erroring out in the middle then I would like to see that graph as well and then in the system start I'll show you different utilization like CPU memory network on all those tiers that is involved including the client who is generating the loads okay and also sometimes I like to um, show memory and CPU consumption of selected process say for example in a case that where the database is running I like to know how much Oracle process is consuming both memory and CPU okay so those kind of things we collect and show them in a in a, in a graphical format that in the performance report and also sometimes we might need some other stats like how you know for example in, in, in database they have something called stats pack or AWR report okay so they are very specific database things and also like you know if you are uh, you know running uh, in, the, in the middle tier also you can instrument your your ap application server or the Apache web server to give you uh, more sophisticated and specific statistics so 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 this is all about test result and the next thing is about analysis after looking at those results you analyze those results and further say what kind of 
behavior that you are seeing and what you are not seeing all right and so that is what is called analysis so in analysis phase what we're going to do we are going to do like you know maybe like you know the whenever you run the performance test you uncover some issues okay and then you need to you need to you need to give some you know some background about why you saw that issue and if any kind of workaround or code fixes that you did or you know or a developer gives you to uh, to to implement to, to to check in and then run the test again so sometimes you know basically what are the like you know in in the in the analysis i like to see what are the non performing sqls in the database okay or what are the hot functions which consuming a lot of lot of you know which which consuming a lot of cpu time in the uh, in, in the application code or in the in the infrastructure code or in database code or i can i would like to know if there's any any concurrency issues like you know any thread contention or locking happening and like also you can give some kind of suggestion how to do deployment change like say for example you saw that you know like you know, in our case we saw that okay like you know, we are running in a, uh, one instance of web server and one instance of database server so do you think that like you know maybe after you test a hundred user load you figure out that before this database server maxed out this middle tier already maxed out or even that the database is not yet completely utilized your middle tiers are gone then do you consider to add one more middle tier okay so those kind of things you can you, you put in deployment or one, and another kind of deployment is that like you know do you think that if we add a caching layer between the between the web server and the database server our performance is going to improve so those kind of suggestion of architectural changes that you can give and also like you know if you if you see that there are a lot of buttons in data data side that is there any any way that you want to change the data uh, underlying data structure or like you know if you feel like you know this relational database is no more scaling then do you think that we want to go for a no sql database or whatever okay so those are kind of things that you that you do in this suggestion then finally as i say that conclusion in the conclusion you put like you know, what are the what are the things that needs to be investigated further? Performance testing never ends. Like in case of functional testing, that you find a answer that it is working or not working. But in case of performance testing, is very subjective and very qualitative. Okay, so therefore, basically, I can guarantee that okay, functional testing will start on day one, and it will finish at day two. But that doesn't happen in case of performance test. Okay, so we started with a goal, but we have to do some kind of compromise on the results and so on. So essentially, like if you're lucky enough, maybe you'll finish the you know whatever goal that you that you set you 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 achieved. But most of the time, uh, you know, it requires some sort of uh, you know a compromise, and then and a lot of things can be done later on, investigated further. And any other concern that you have, you know, beyond whatever I discussed here in the report that's it how you write a really a nice report and these are the essential part of a report there are you know as i said again summarization six parts and a report generally a, a good performance report is about maybe three to five pages okay so you can explain all those things in the three to five pages you know you don't know it's, it's, it's really doesn't need to be a 20 page document which nobody reads okay so uh, so with this i think uh we have covered everything that we're supposed to cover in this course and what i'm going to do i'm going to create another course which is going to focus on this part using popular tool like load runner and and jmeter okay but but i hope this is going to give you a good foundation of performance testing and thank you for your time uh, that you were invest invested by seeing these videos i hope this this is useful and see you in next video in next class thank you